Prada became a symbol of fashion and luxury. The brand grew carefully by expanding product lines and acquiring iconic brands. But it has suffered from weak financial performance, with their stock price falling more than 60% from its peak and never really picking up from there. Let's dive in to see what happened. Fratelli Prada was founded by Mario Prada and his brother in Milan in 1913. In addition to selling high-quality leather goods, the company would also sell imported steamer trunks and handbags from England. The quality was so astounding that Prada became the official supplier of the Italian royal house. This allows Prada to display the House of Savoy coat of arms and knotted rope design in its trademark logo. Although Mario barred women in the family from overseeing business operations, the flambeau was eventually taken up by Mario's granddaughter, Mucha, in the late 1970s. Mucha met Patrizio Bertelli, a businessman who had established his own leather company. Borelli guided Mucha in the business operations, suggesting to drop the English goods and redesigning existing luggage. Mucha worked diligently on new designs to release backpacks and totes that were made with a special type of nylon used as covering for steamer trunks. However, it was really hard to market these backpacks, due to their high price tag. Although the brand did virtually no advertising, word of mouth traveled fast and the pace started picking up. Prada's first collection of women's shoes launched in late 1970s, with more items being added subsequently. They opened more of their own stores, marked by a shade of light green, which became known as Prada Green. The first one was opened in Milan, then others opened in New York, London, Paris and Tokyo. By late 1980s, the first ready-to-wear collection was launched and became known for its dropped waistlines and narrow belts. In the early 1990s, the brand set out a plan to expand more in the US, with Prada items featured in department stores. The brand eventually became a staple in the fashion community. Mucha then introduced Mew Mew, a brand catered for younger women. The men's segment was not forgotten, with a line of ready-to-wear and footwear introduced in early 1990s. To expand more, the brand wanted to dive down the value chain, exploring the sale of cheaper items. Bertelli's idea was to put emphasis on the less expensive collections, such as their Prada Sport and Mew Mew brands. It was quite a risky move, as Gucci tried that approach and failed in the 1980s. But Bertelli was convinced that the new generation had a different approach to brand shopping. Prada was secretly buying shares in Gucci, only to sell them to Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, who was attempting a Gucci takeover. In the late 1990s, Prada embarked on a buying spree, scooping up companies in the US, Germany and UK. One of these companies was Church & Company, a British brand of footwear, synonymous with style and elegance. They also acquired Fendi in a joint venture with Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, only to sell it two years later. Sunglasses were also added to the product line, which was then licensed to Luxottica. All of these acquisitions and new product lines enabled Prada to rake in over 1.5 billion euros in revenues by 2002. However, debt had ballooned as well. But the company was planning an IPO to use the proceeds to pay off the debts. But the IPO was cancelled due to the weak markets, fetching a lower valuation than what management would have liked. They thus tried to renegotiate 700 million euros of debt that was soon coming due. This is why Prada sold its stake in Fendi. They used the cash to pay off part of the debt. In the meantime, the company dove into the fragrance space by collaborating with Puig to create Prada perfumes. And here's something that I was not aware of. A Prada mobile phone was launched by LG in 2007. Apparently, it was the first captive touchscreen smartphone to be launched. Until now, I thought that Apple was the first one to introduce that kind of phone. LG even filed a lawsuit against Apple, claiming that the Prada phone's design was stolen. The Prada phone was well received by customers, who bought over a million units within 18 months of the launch. Prada was thinking about an IPO again in 2007, but obviously, valuations were not attractive during that time period, to say the least. It seems that their timing is always off for some reason. The financial crisis period was definitely hard for Prada, who had amassed over a billion euros in debt. They completed a reorganization and hired seasoned executives to form part of the top management team. By 2009, the firm wanted to restructure its debt again. It seems that their acquisition spree was catching up to them. They needed financing fast or else they could be in deep trouble. 
In mid-2011, Prada finally launched its IPO on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, raising $2.6 billion. The proceeds were used to pay down debt and launch new stores, mainly in China and the rest of Asia. Everything was back on track and doing okay by 2013. The stock price was at an all-time high. But then things took a turn for the worst. The stock price fell by more than 60% and did not grow much since then. You might ask, well, they secured funding to pay off some debt. Their brand has cemented itself as a luxury powerhouse in the industry. What could go wrong? As always, I have plotted some financials to see what was happening. The firm's revenue was growing at a strong pace until 2013. Profits were growing consistently as well, thanks to the improvement in gross margin. New store openings coupled with a strong retail environment helped the firm reach new heights. But they might have been expanding too fast, taking on overhead costs to sustain a higher revenue figure. In 2014, their net income declined by nearly 30% on 3.5 billion euros of sales. This is the result of increasing overhead costs coupled with the decrease in gross margin. After reporting the disappointing results, Prada announced it would conduct a major overhaul of its production processes and scale back on store openings. But that was not enough to counter the weaker Asia-Pacific sales. Bertelli blamed the crackdown on corruption in China for lower sales. The luxury market in Asia was also undergoing a fundamental shift due to a change in consumer shopping habits and the entry of new luxury brands. Neither revenue nor net income really improved from there. Do you shop at Prada? Are the products really worth it? What do you think they could do to reignite sales? As always, let us know what you think.